Good evening, 6.42 p.m. It's Monday, the 17th of February all over. We are almost through with February. Remember, it's a short month, so it only goes to number 28. Those born on the 29th, they'll have to celebrate it in four years. Celebrate it on the 28th, and we'll call it good. <laughs> you know, a lot has been said about um, what has transpired in my life with um, the Han family. Uh, for many reasons, for one, I've, I've known them since for four years, so this wasn't just a stranger giving money. This was somebody who was thankful for what they had done for my daughter. They'd taken her out of the cold. She was freezing to death. She was homeless living a very rough lifestyle. They brought her in, saved her life, fed her, made sure she was okay, and then put her on the bus home to me. The Han family at that time, the father was alive, and he worked, and the mother stayed home, and their son, Chris, had never, ever had a job in his life. So basically, he was being taken care of by his dad too. Um, uh, things were just, you know, fine until Mr. Han died two years ago. Um, he died in his sleep next to his wife. She found him when she woke up that morning, which is horrible. I mean, it's horrible. Within six months, they lost the place they've been living for many years, and they suddenly found themselves homeless. So they headed out to California thinking that there was jobs and places to live, and what they met up with was a high cost of living compared to Georgia. Um, completely polar opposites. So a guy there, who I won't mention his name, helped them out, trying to find a place, trying to find work. Also introduced his Chris's mom to Disneyland, which she always wanted to see. He paid for the whole day, and she got to see it. She always wanted to, so it made her very happy. But alas, the car that Chris had driven out was only $300 in his pocket from Georgia to California, L.A., um, we forgot to put oil in it, and so it didn't work anymore. And this kind man who had been spending all this money on them in food, in housing, hotels, and in taking them around to look for places to live, and I'm not finding one, and I'm Chris not looking for work. Bought another car for them to get back to Georgia. I ended up in Oklahoma. Again, homeless, nowhere to go. Slept in the park a few nights. It's very disturbing. And, and he could cast from his phone. That was the craziest thing. Um, he never stopped casting. And so this guy who lived in Oklahoma, um, another very kind individual, uh, paid for a first, last, and middle of, of rent for these people. Got them food, treated them well. He spent a lot of money. He cared. And this was all for the fact. You know, we're talking about a woman who at that time was 73, and now she's 74 years old. Everybody was worried about her. She just lost her husband. She knew nothing else, nothing else. You know, but she was lost. And so we were worried about her. And it would bring tears to my eyes. I watched her. She wasn't a con artist. She still isn't a con artist. I have to defend Mrs. Han on this. She's not a con artist. Her son is, and he became one. But the person that I knew four years ago was not. I helped. I made bad decisions. He promised me he would get a job not big online anymore, and take care of his mom if he had a car. That way he could get back and forth and not worry about Uber, because Uber's really expensive. 
and that would take some pressure off of him. So I got him a car. Then her damn dryer broke down. She needed a dryer. Landlord was shit. Wouldn't do anything for them. I got her a dryer. I paid for his fines. I paid for his UAs. I paid for his blood tests. I just didn't stop. Food, gas, the list goes on. I did not want to see him in jail because where would mama go? You know, she has no other family and the family she does have is not safe enough for her to be with. And we'll go into any details on that. So, that's how it happened. It all started four years ago with my daughter. They saved her life. I felt like I owed them. I felt appreciative. They brought her home. <clears throat> Some people have been sending me um, Chris has blocked me. Pictures of Mama. She has lost so much weight. Pelham police have made welfare checks many times on her. I can't do anything from Washington State, so it has to be people on that end of the, of the United States that can make these phone calls and have welfare checks done on her and APS call or CPS, you know, it's all one of the same, I tell you. It's a protective services to help these people. When they get there, she refuses to go with them. She refuses to leave and she insists everything is okay. She's basically being told what to do. And when Chris says, Mama, am I telling you what to do? No. <laughs> She's rather cute. And when she got the doll about uh, a year ago, um, it seemed to help her a little bit. She had lost a child. And so that doll represented a lot of things to her. Again, she wasn't faking. I know a lot of you feel that they're in on it together. I don't blame you for feeling that. I don't. I, I can only imagine how it looks, but I know for a fact she's not, she's not in on it. She's just going along with it because that's her only kid. It's her only way of survival. She's going to do nothing. She doesn't know what to do. Her husband supported her her whole life. She knows no difference. She's 74. She's diabetic. I'm suspecting pre um, early dementia. And Chris feeds her junk food <laughs> and promised her chicken. She didn't get chicken. I mean, this little things, it, it bugs me when I hear about it. I hear about a lot of things third hand. He's banned from YouTube, banned from Facebook. Now there's Instagram. Is he banned from it? I have no idea, you know. I I don't know, according to what I've heard, um, he's still begging and having his ups and downs, and he's been stealing her medication, so he's even worse, drinking a lot, and he started math a few months back. There you go. Watch your family go from here to here. It's been hard. There's nothing more I can do. I cannot afford to help them anymore. When I finally stopped helping him, he ripped me apart. A person I've never known before. I couldn't believe it. I told him he'd be sorry that he did that. You know, and he was. Or not. He may not feel any, have any conscience whatsoever. I have no idea. But it seems to be a pattern of his. People who help him, if they stop helping him or tell him no, he goes against them, starts blocking them, starts calling them names, saying terrible things about them and destroying their reputation. He has a group of people right now who are enabling him. It's their choice. They want to give them money, fine. 
But I want you to remember who you're giving the money to. It's not going towards his mother, not anymore. He's taking her social security check, which is illegal. You can't tell me that there's not people online listening what's going on because they're gonna get him, the feds. What he's doing is illegal. He's messing with her social security check. Begging online. I don't think it's illegal. I don't know. Facebook won't do anything about it. So people get him banned. I mean, you can flag somebody so much and, and they get banned, you know. So <laughs> banning him is not going to work. Um, I think getting him some help would. Maybe he needs to serve some time in jail for a little bit. I don't know. People willingly giving him money, and I was one of them, it is not illegal. He's just considered a scammer. Somebody who scams money off of women especially. Um, some men have given him money too. But the women, they think hard. And some of the ladies involved really, really are, are attracted to Chris. That was not my case. And that's their business. But Chris needs stopped. His mother needs help. When will people help her? Help her. Make a case for it. She needs to be removed from the home, put into a safe environment, and somebody else look over her social security check that goes strictly to her. You know, she'd probably be putting in, put into a nursing facility. She's not well enough to be on her own. You know, or maybe they could put her under assisted living and she'd surprise everybody, you know. She'd miss Chris something horribly. But again, he's going to end up killing her, you know. Giving her the wrong food. Driving around for hours and she wants to go home. Please take me home. It's got to stop. People, human beings, have a tendency to care deeply or not give two shits at all. They enjoy that drama. And it's turned into a drama. And the only reason why is because how to save Mrs. Han has come into view. And it's not even about Mrs. Han anymore. It's about Chris. What do you do? You know? I remember a good family. I remember a family who saved my daughter's life. That's who I'm Help her, please.